Cuba. Really? Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Dean Blundell Show. My name is Dean, which is, it happens every time. <laughs> uh, anyway, welcome. As we sit here on a Friday, lots to do. We've got an announcement to get to. We've got to talk about the winners of our Show Us Your Pod contest, which will be cool. More than one winner today, too, I think. Can't say much else. Can't say anything else, actually. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about... Um, a bunch of stuff today. We've got like a ratatouille of things. And we've also got a guest who I've known for a long time, haven't talked to you for a long time, but uh, she joins myself and Darren on the podcast today. Please welcome uh, award-winning CBC reporter, Miss Caroline Bargroot out of Winnipeg, Manitoba. Ladies and gentlemen, Winnipeg, Manitoba, the coldest province in Canada. Little, <laughs> It is. It is. It's the coldest. What is the temperature there now? Right here, it's, it's like two degrees. What is Actually, it in Winnipeg? It's not bad. Okay, no, I lied. It's cold. It's minus nine. It minus was nice nine? when I walked my dog this morning. It was like minus two, but it's minus nine. Yeah. It's Jim. really cold in Los Angeles, too. Ugh. Yeah. 64. But what's that in <laughs> Celsius? Uh, I think you're looking at around 17, 16 degrees there with mm -hmm. 64, if I'm not mistaken. It's 18, so I was That's off nice. by a degree or two. Nice. Yeah, so it's 18 in LA every day. I don't miss it. <laughs> Do you like Winnipeg? First of all, Winnipeg gets shit on a lot um, collectively. Right? Yes. And you've been totally. there a long time. I have. I consider myself a Winnipegger now. I've been here, I'd say, 14 years, maybe? Mm -hmm. 14 years. Yeah, I really like Winnipeg. At mm -hmm. first, I was so excited to come here because I was living in Sudbury, Ontario, and Sudbury is super small. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm from Toronto originally. And then uh, when I moved to Winnipeg, I was excited to see big, tall buildings. And then when I go home and visit Toronto, I'd be like, oh, yeah, OK, I get it. I get mm -hmm. it. It's it's a smaller city, but the people here are great. There's lots to do. The culture here is great. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I'm, good looking. Yeah. I'm, yeah, they are. They seem to be mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. Um, and it's got the forks. It, you got you got a hockey team. Um, yeah, we do. We do. The, the I mean, world. I'm not really into sports, but no, I support the Jets. Are you are you one of those people like, isn't it one of those things where if you, you're you're in Winnipeg and, and, and you're there, if you're not a Jets fan, you're basically not even part of the community. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the funny thing about Winnipeg. They love their sports teams. They love the Jets. They love right. the Bombers. Um, if I'm going to watch sports, I'll watch the Jets. Mm -hmm. I like them, but I prefer you like to, sports. you know, what? No, yeah, I, I like right. it. But my problem is I always feel bad for the losing team. And yeah. so, especially if it's like a playoff That's or something and Caroline. someone loses, I, I feel so upset about it. And then my, <laughs> my husband says the same thing. He's like, you're such an idiot. That's funny. It's true. <laughs> so funny. You, you, you feel like legitimately athletes. bad for people when they lose a game. I, yes. You can't they focus cry. On, I get can't upset focus on about win? it. You can't focus on the no. positive part of the game? No? Well, because then they show the ones who lost and they're crying and they're upset and you, part of the you know, process. they work so hard for it. And I just so feel if you won the lottery, it. would you feel bad for everyone that paid into the lottery that you won? No, I would never pay into the lottery, but I would want to win. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> Caroline, I've known you for, for uh, uh, fuck, I was Very just long thinking time. about it. Yeah. Uh, I met you at the edge. Yeah. Right when I started, which was in 2001. Yep. And you left shortly thereafter. I'm going to say. I was laid off. Yeah. You were laid off. Yeah. Because they brought two buildings together, as I understand it. That's right. And um, I'm I'm just thrilled to have you part of the podcast. But I also, uh, we were talking off the air. You, mm -hmm. thought, you thought I was a I huge. I thought you were a dick. <laughs> yeah. A total douche. <laughs> you know, like I was telling you off air. I have a friend in Winnipeg, Brian yeah. DeBrot. He is a huge fan of beers, like huge fan. Oh, Dean Blundell, this, that, the other. I'm like, he is a douche. He was a dick. I do not like him. I do not understand why you like him. Yeah. And then I was telling you today, I'm like, oh, you're kind of likable. But I didn't think so 20 years ago. <laughs> hold it. So hold it. You, this guy, and and is, he's a Winnipegger, but he must have come yeah. from Toronto. Or he just he likes He came this... from Toronto. No, no. Oh, he okay. came from Toronto. Yeah. yeah. So he's just, he likes he our stuff that we do now. Um, and he's he used a, to listen to you in Toronto too. And I thought, really? Cause the guy was a fucking dick. Did like, you, would you guys have conversations about me? Like, would he bring stuff up and would you shit on me for minutes on end 
in conversation? Well, anytime he'd say Dean Blundell anything, I'd be like, right. oh, that guy is such a dick. Why? I don't even remember us like having a convers having many conversations. I know we talked to each other in passing, but why was I a dick? What did I, I do know. that made just, me a dick? I don't know. I just thought you were a douche. I just thought you were just a douche. Right. You know, and I don't know, maybe it was the morning show shtick or something. And maybe, I was maybe a it was, you know, maybe you were. I don't I didn't actually really know you. Mm -hmm. But I totally didn't like you. <laughs> but you had this preconceived notion that I was an asshole. That must have been some of the stuff that I was saying on the radio at the time. That must have upset you. I Probably. Must have, must have been a little controversial or a little shitty at times. Because <laughs> uh, I understand the reputation. I live with it every day. It still doesn't go away, no matter what I do, right? Like when yeah. I asked you to come on, I was thinking, I wonder if she thinks I'm an asshole. I 100% did. <laughs> and when you were addressing me like Ms. Bargood, I'm like... <laughs> Ms. like i used to work with you yeah but i sent you a note Whatever. like and that's how like i feel all professional i'm like is he setting me up for something no no can i tell you something and i'll be 100 percent honest before we start talking about anything when i send out emails to people like you who i i've known i feel i feel like there's going to be one of two responses or three no response at all um a response of yeah sure and then like a bunch of people going i can't believe i just got a fucking email from this guy he wants me to go on a <laughs> stupid fucking show i thought it was what an asshole what do i do and then and then when they say yes i go why do you want to come on the show of someone who's a total asshole that's the other thing and i love that you did because we're going to talk about a bunch of great stuff today some not so great stuff but like what for what what is it that drove you to say yes to come on my show even though you thought i was a dick you know, that's a very good question because at first I was like, no. And then I thought, well, I don't remember what I was like 20 years ago, uh -huh. but I can guarantee you I was not the person I am today because uh -huh. I'm 20 years older. And so I thought, I'll talk to you, see what this is about as long as, you know, you're legitimately wanting to talk about what you said you wanted to talk about then. Sure. As long as Darren's there as a safety net, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. Do it, Darren. Jump in. That's your back, uh, Caroline. Yeah. Thank you. you don't, I, can Guys, I tell you here's something? The thing, though, Caroline. Yeah. Go ahead. Dean, Dean had this like cloud above him at the edge at, yeah. at Chorus Entertainment that, that followed him around. And I think a lot of that, all joking aside, was his, his on air persona. People thought he was a douche in real life because he was a douche on the radio. When in fact, he was a douche on the radio to get great ratings, to bring great sponsors, to make the station as great as it was back then. But, in, it, but when you got to hang out with Dean and go to a bar, which we did, or watch sports, which we did, or, or he got me my job at the edge, it turns out Dean, Dean Dean's a, a, a really, really down to earth, likable fella. Uh, but people just couldn't get past that cloud that was hanging around him or, or like pig pan in, in, in peanuts. There's always that dust cloud around Shit wherever, wherever cloud. he went. Um, I got a peanut shirt on actually. But you were probably also trying to prove yourself too, right? Like I had been there for, I can't even remember how long I was at the edge, but I'd been there for a while and Humble and Fred were on the morning show and they were lovely and they were so nice. And then they got let go and you got brought in and there was a lot of controversy surrounding that. And then you came in being, you know, all cocky and whatever. And I thought, who the fuck's this guy? Who does he think he is kind of thing? And the best. Uh, yeah. And then, but See, here's Whatever. the thing. You, years can give you perspective. Time can give you perspective. I oh. look. You know what Dean is? Dean is the George Bush of broadcast media. Ah, oh, shut Let up. Let me explain. I don't even know how to take that. Shut Let me explain. Up. George Bush was a. Well, I didn't like George Bush. I hated George Bush. I thought he was a terrible president. I thought he was dumb. He was annoying. He was a douche and a dick. But as time has gone on, I'm like okay, number two, one or two, George Bush. Not, okay. Yeah, the the second George, okay. George W. Bush. Like, um, the like guy that almost that choked guy. to death on a pretzel. That he's guy. a nice enough fella. Like, I mean, everyone seems to like him now, and maybe he wasn't that bad. So, Dean, you're the George W. Bush of, of broadcasting. You know, I wish I could. I, it's funny because um, I think there's a lot to everything uh, you've said, except for what Darren said. I, 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 <laughs> everything made sense except Darren. Ignore yeah. Darren. Yeah, that's Come what on, I think. Dude, dude is Mike. Um, I think that there's a lot to be said. There are, there are lots of days I still deal every day. I still deal with the reputation of what was, what had happened around me losing my job. That's really what cemented my reputation as a homophobe 
or an asshole or someone who hates the law or someone who's hateful. And it was like in Canada anyway, and, and I don't take any pride in it because it caused me a great amount of consternation, as you could probably imagine. But imagine. but um, it, it was it was this uh, inability to control this reputation that I'd carefully farmed over like, you know, 15 years on the radio, which was which was good enough for everybody to make lots of money on it. So I still that that never sat well with me. But you know what what it was it it was it was it was everything it was my 14 years of of yelling and screaming at people or making fun of things and people and you know what it was and i'll tell you this is what it really comes down to and i've pinpointed it over all these years this isn't why i wanted to talk by the way <laughs> i know um but i pinpointed <laughs> it's therapy i get it, it uh, i guess uh, but i pinpointed it after all these years it was m- making fun of people who didn't deserve it that was that earned me the reputation uh, that I, I fucking, I did it. It was all me, right? In, in in all the good things and the bad things. It wasn't all bad. There were lots of wonderful things, lots of great things that we did that, that procured the reputation that we had of being good broadcasters who did a great job for a really long period of time. And we're able to connect with people. You don't connect with people by being a huge asshole all the time. So, you know, there were lots of good things as well. But what it comes down to is just it's it's life, right? You were that person back then. You did what you needed to do to be successful. And you realize, like, if I said, I, I thought something of myself yesterday in the kitchen. I was standing there. I'm 47 years old. And I'm standing there making a sandwich in the evening, an evening sandwich, if you will. And I, I was sitting there thinking to myself, <clears throat> you know, If I could go back 20 years and look at 27-year-old Dean in the face, I would punch him as hard as I fucking could and tell him, you know absolutely nothing. You know nothing yet. You don't know anything about failure. You don't know anything about confidence. You don't know anything about being good to people, kindness, patience, uh, authenticity, none, none of that stuff. You don't know anything. You're just a fucking blowhard. So get it right now so you can enjoy the next 40 years of your life. That's where I am now, although... I still have an inner rage that I satisfy from time to time. Uh, you know, I think though, back in the day, radio was different, mm-hmm. you know, and the expectations and society was different and the things you could say and the things you could do and the jokes that were acceptable are different than they are today. So I think that is probably part of it also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it is too. And, and everything, you know, everything has changed over time. It's one of the great parts about time is it means everything is temporary, right? Um, which bring, was the reason why I wanted to have you on the program today. Caroline Bargoot uh, joins us for a award-winning reporter from CBC in Winnipeg. She's covering the Peter Nygaard story. Now, if you're not watching this Peter Nygaard story, um, it is disgusting. It is, it is heavy. It is evil. It is sick. Um, and, and the details that are starting to come out, thanks to people like Caroline, who unfortunately have to cover this, and you do such a great job covering it. Where can we follow you for coverage on that, by the way, on Twitter? Can you give me your uh, quick Twitter at handle? At C-Bargoot, B-A-R-G-H-O-U-T. Um, and obviously cbc.ca okay yeah it, that's it, she, she's she's in you're in the courtroom you're covering this but peter nygaard has been charged with sex trafficking it's been happening for many many years everything seems very allegedly, yeah allegedly it everything seems very epstein uh, it, it, uh what are the short stroke can you can it kind of base the foundation of the story if people aren't aware of it and what you're covering um, and, and then we'll kind of make our way out from there. But what, what sure. is happening right now? So on Monday night, Peter Nygaard was arrested. He's 79 years old. He is uh, currently in the Winnipeg Remand Center, which is, I guess, a holding facility. It's a jail. Um, so he was at a home in Winnipeg. Which... Now, Peter Nygaard, sorry to interrupt before you get started. Okay. No, Peter please. Nygaard world famous fashion designer uh winnipeg yep. finn family immigrated from finland he, i mean the dude's a world beater he's the guy with the, the buff muscles on the from winnipeg home base in winnipeg yep worth 817 million that nygaard sorry go ahead at one at one point yes we yeah. do believe that he was you know he was one of the 10 most richest people in canada or 100 most richest people in canada at one point uh he also had headquarters in uh, new york he had headquarters in toronto he had you know um factories, I believe in Hong Kong. So he he was world renowned as a, a fashion designer. Um, so he was arrested Monday night on allegations that he sexually abused and trafficked women and girls for over a 25 year period. Mm-hmm. And this was an FBI investigation. And like I said, he was 
arrested in Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. So the U.S. authorities contacted the RCMP and said, we need you to arrest this guy. This guy's a flight risk. Um, We're concerned about him. He's a danger to society. These are the things that they said in a sworn affidavit. So the Mounties were representing the U.S. authorities and wrote an affidavit to a judge saying we would like permission to arrest him. In that affidavit, they basically lay out some of the allegations and they are that, you know, Peter Nygaard would allegedly recruit um, women and girls through what they call pamper parties. He'd throw big parties at his house and then he would rate girls, you know, certain, they didn't get into the rating system, but I imagine maybe a one to 10, you know, this Mm -hmm. person's a 10, this person's a whatever. And then he would get his uh, employees, or at least police say he'd get his employees to arrange for him to have sex with those girls. And um, in the court documents, the girls that the police talked to, some say that they were given alcohol, others say that they were drugged. One girl says that she was gang raped by um, uh, Peter Nygaard and five other men and that he became angry with her after and told her that she ruined the night because she fought back and tried to fight these men off. Uh, So there are quite a few allegations that have been made against him. And I should be clear, he was arrested. He hasn't been convicted of a crime. So he is still to be presumed innocent. Mm -hmm. Um, Caroline Bargut uh, Mm -hmm. joins Darren and myself on the podcast today, CBC reporter in Winnipeg, covering the fashion mogul Peter Nygaard. It's an arrest. Mm -hmm. So he's currently in a Winnipeg remand center. Um, what is the process now? Is he going to uh, have, is he going to be sent to the United States? Have they asked to take him out? And is he going to, does he fight that extradition? Uh, is that what is on the table? Because there was some court action today and you've been in court with him recently. Right. So on Tuesday, um, it was his first court appearance. So he was arrested, brought into court on Tuesday afternoon, um, the his lawyer asked for a publication ban it wasn't given a publication ban the judge denied that so the process now is the u.s wants him extradited they Mm -hmm. would like him to be tried in the u.s on charges of sex assault sex trafficking racketeering at this point i talked to his lawyer today actually jay prober and i asked him are you was your client planning on fighting the extradition and he said i don't know but they are planning on applying for bail Mm -hmm. and so at this point they're applying for bail i don't know when they will have a bail hearing we will hopefully be at the bail hearing uh, when he applies and then we go from there we know for sure though he's got a court date the next court date i believe is on the 13th Mm -hmm. of january and so that should start the extradition process so is is he been charged by uh, Canadian authorities or is he just being held uh, in a process because the FBI have said you need to hang on to this guy until we can bring him to Canada bring him from Canada to the United States to face yes. charges that he's currently under and what are those charges that he's been wh- what is he facing in the United States so the um Court documents basically say it's a nine count indictment for uh, sex assault, sex trafficking, racketeering, and then it says other related charges. I don't know exactly the charges or how many victims because the court documents weren't really clear. They said that the FBI had interviewed at least two dozen women and girls, and these are the allegations that are being made against him and that they have, you know, the police say they have evidence of these allegations, but we don't actually know how many Uh, alleged victims there are or what exactly the charges will be once he is extradited to the U.S. But we know that the FBI would like to try him, obviously, Mm -hmm. or the U.S. authorities would like to try him in the U.S. Mm -hmm. He's not facing any charges at this point in Canada, but we do know that police in Winnipeg were investigating. We know that police in the Bahamas are investigating and, of course, in the U.S. So we don't know if there are other charges to come out of this. All we know is that the U.S. has charged him. Mm. A certain amount of tangible evidence to hold him. You would think. I mean, in the court documents, it talks about, you know, having phones, like um, seizing phones from some of the girls from Nygaard when he left the Bahamas to come to Canada. I think it was in February. Um, and so they took his phone at the airport. I think it was St. Paul's Airport in Minnesota. And so they have 
evidence, supposedly, they, there's also been two subpoenas in a class action lawsuit in the US. So I should backtrack. 57 women were suing him, um, alleging that he raped or sexually assaulted them. In 57, the class action was in the uh, Southern District of New York court. Do you have a, do you have a time a time frame for those uh, those alleged crimes? Some women or girls say that it, they date back to the farthest back that I read was 1977. In the FBI affidavit, it says 1995, and so I don't know whether some of the people who filed the class action had come forward to police or not. We don't mm -hmm. have any numbers on the police investigation, but mm -hmm. we do have numbers on the class action. And when it was put on hold in the summer, there was 57 women and girls who were part of it. Mm -hmm. And then now the lawyers for the class action say, once it is back up and running, they expect to have at least 84. Is there any attached. high profile celebrities attached to this similar to Epstein's situation? I don't know about high profile. We know of one woman who spoke with us. She is a Canadian actress. Her name is April Tellick. And she was recently in um, a Hallmark movie uh, that was just on the TV the other night. Um, I don't know that there are any, I mean, maybe there are, but they're all referred to as Jane Doe in the mm -hmm. class action lawsuit. And in the police document or the court documents, they don't actually name any of the victims. Why is that? Why not the victims? I know why they don't name the victims, but why is it that they're not the same thing with Epstein? And I know you can't draw parallels because this is mm -hmm. its own court case on its own merits and its own alleged criminology or the criminality involved is all mm -hmm. alleged. So you can't really come mm -hmm. out and say anything indefinitely. But why is that? We don't actually know. And, and it might be you know, they might be withholding that information mm -hmm. and for whatever reasons to bring it forward in a court, because at this point, this is, it. Ha he hasn't had his day in court. And so we don't actually know the evidence against him. And we don't actually know what the process is gonna look like. All we know is the police say that they have enough evidence to lay charges against this man for these alleged crimes and that they've interviewed at least two dozen victims, but say that they believe that these uh, crimes have affected hundreds. Have you, have you spoke, ah, I hate that. I hate that. Have you spoken to any of the victims, Caroline? I have, I've spoken to several. And one woman I spoke with, she's 49. I talked to her just a couple days ago, the day that he was arrested. Mm -hmm. She said she thought she would take the secret to her grave. She used to work at a Nygaard retail outlet here in Winnipeg. She was 21 years old. She thought that she was going to be a model. Her store manager, she says her store manager told her she looks great in Nygaard clothes and she's been talking to Nygaard about him and, and wants him to meet her. He came in and she thought that she was going to go to New York to be a model. And she alleges that he ended up raping her in the dressing room there. And she says she left her husband and her newborn child and didn't know what to do. She just left, she fled, it destroyed her life. And this is the first time she felt brave enough to come forward when she heard that he was arrested. How many other stories, if you talk to other victims, how many stories similar? There are a lot of similarities in the stories. Um, some of the victims that I've spoken to said they were expected to have sex with Peter Nygaard, one woman in particular, I talked to her just the other day, she filed a lawsuit against an Instagram model, Sulin Medeiros, and she alleges that Sulin, in 2010, I think it was, she alleges that Sulin befriended her in Florida, they met on Twitter, she told her, come to a party I'm hosting in Miami, the girl goes, she's 18 at the time, she goes to this party, they get along, it's great, she wants to be just like her, she's been modeling since she's 14 years old, and she's now 18, then Sulin says, why don't you come to the Bahamas? You want to hang out with me for a couple of days? My friend's a fashion designer, has this, you know, private compound. We can go jet skiing, all these things. And the girl says, sure. She's thinking, you know, well, she says she's thinking this is this is the, the celebrity lifestyle and, and I'm going to live it. And she goes down to the Bahamas and she says she's informed at that point that she's required to have sex with Peter Nygaard. And she says, no, I don't, I don't want to have sex with him. And she says, well, that's, you know, it's, it, she alleges that Sulin says, oh, it's easy. It's fast. You know, it's, it's not that bad. I do it all the time. It's and fast. Not the a great endorsement. Says, 
well, I, I guess that was what, you know, she believed that the pitch was and says she ends up meeting Nygaard and didn't want to have sex with him. And she says that he raped her and then left $500 US on the coffee table. Again, I mean, you know, very similar to and, and just as fucking creepy and disgusting as the Epstein stories. And and then I wonder about process, you know, like, was that the standard process for for, for Nygaard and, and how, you know, according to documents and what you've gathered, how is he in, how are these people insulated in his situation? Everybody, him and Epstein, both insulated. How are these, were they able to maintain insulation f for a period of time? Because I looked over Peter Nygaard's criminal history and he's, he's been charged with sexual assault several times. He has been this since 1990. He's been I know of one in 1980. He was he was charged with sex assault in Winnipeg, but he, the charges were stayed. And so there isn't actually a, a record other than a newspaper article that said that he had been arrested and charged with sexual assault. But then those charges were stayed. And so he was he's never been convicted of a sex crime. No, in Canada or the U.S. that I know of. But people say that this is it was a known thing that that he he was allegedly assaulting women and girls and that this was kind of common knowledge yeah and that's the thing i mean you report on the facts but i'm 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 wondering you know i'm trying to i'm trying to piece together how something goes from common knowledge to it being a, a criminal activity like we know exactly what's going on because um i have an opinion on it and i i, I know my opinions don't matter for shit here and, and i'm not saying my opinion is important what i'm saying is is that it seems like there have been uh so many stories like this that have been 50 years in the making because uh they've been rumors for so long and now these rumors have like we've all heard the rumors are all coming true how how did how were they able to keep these rumors from being reality until today so in the court documents the police also talk about um peter nygaard trying to contain the message and trying to uh pay off or threaten um people who are saying things about him. Mm -hmm. And so he was very wealthy, as you said, you know, at one point he was believed to have, you know, $700 million or something along those lines. Like he was very successful, very wealthy. And according to the court documents, some of his victims were disadvantaged. They were poor. They came from a background of assault or, yeah. you know, victimization. And so it's easier to control people allegedly if they don't have anything mm. right like mm -hmm. who's gonna who's gonna believe you and when you think about it 20 years ago 30 years ago even 10 years ago we weren't talking about sexual assault the way we are now mm -hmm. we weren't talking about you know victims as people and as people with rights right and so society has changed too and 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 there's strength in numbers Mm. So maybe if if you're on your own, who's going to believe me against him, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In, in any case, any rape case, rape cases are hard to prove. We know that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I think you you you, um, you hit the nail on the head. You know, finally we're talking about it. And um, I would love to know what he looks like in court because you were in court with him the other day, weren't you? I was. So I've actually never met him in person ever. I've you know heard I picture about him, like obviously. a I picture like a homeless Siegfried slash Roy. So he on the billboards that were, you know, all over, I think one of your guys had uh, Googled him just a few, I think it was yep. Darren or, or someone had Googled him anyways. Yeah, Sean, you know, you put see a picture of him up, big, there you go. You see these, you know, big muscles and that's, I guess, what I had expected to see, even though he's 79 years old. So I'm just going to reach over here. So we hired a, a sketch artist actually to um, come to court. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. So he he did not look anything like I thought that he would look. Wow. He looked small to me. Like he looked really small. He looked frail. He had like a super messy man bun. Um, obviously he spent the night in jail before he came to court. And so he was walking slow, obviously, because he was shackled. He had um, 
handcuffs around his wrists and his yeah. ankles and he was wearing a gray hoodie he had on gray sweatpants or track pants they're not really like the fleece material they were thinner they look thinner anyways they had yellow stripes along the sides and he just looked and he had on a, a mask obviously because we're in covid times and mm -hmm. he shuffled in and he just looked like an old frail man nothing like i had expected yeah, you all these billboards of him. I know of him doing like I I used to do that in pictures when I was nineteen. By the way, go like that. That's what he. That's what, all these pictures of him doing this. But he's just a little prick. Like he's just a little tiny creepy he's dude a little now. Guy. Yeah, yeah, and and was he? I bet you he was putting it on too, Caroline, for the for the crowd. Like I you don't said, know. he looked I don't sad. Know him. No, but you like he, he did he look sad and creepy? Because that's the sketch I saw. Or like he, he was oh poor me. He looked like he was pulling the old poor me routine. Well, he has denied the allegations. I mean, he th throughout, you know, our reporting on this, he has maintained his innocence. He says that his former neighbor in the Bahamas, Louis Bacon, is paying these people to make up these allegations against him and that he is innocent and that uh, this is all about uh, an effort from Louis Bacon trying to destroy his reputation. So he says that he is innocent. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I mean, I don't know if he's putting it on or not, but what I saw was not what I expected to see. Just hit well, that's why I, know, I want to know about the evidence. I want to know if, if there's any indication from the authorities, whether U.S. or Canadian or abroad, or have real evidence that, that, that pins them against the wall, that makes them guilty. I know in the court of public opinion versus facts are two separate things, and we all make up our mind when someone gets accused of this. High-profile guy with hundreds of millions of dollars of course right. he did it. Look at the look at the thing in Bahamas. Of course, and there's all these girls that are coming out and and, and claiming, uh, uh, ab like a hundred. Uh, Caroline just said like eighty four or something like that last time. Well, from, in the from class the, act for the just, class action. That's, that's just in the me. class action. So that's just like eighty four people that have come forward and said he I raped me. Like that's, that's just that are willing to say it. So like, how many rape survivors, Darren? How many rape survivors go? without saying anything over an extended period of time. Who, who right. won't so the FBI actually said I'm about defending him. I just want to say one thing real quick. I'm not defending yeah. the guy, but because I, I, I also subscribe to uh, the mantra of if there's smoke, there's fire. Um, but I'd like to know what the evidence is. I'd like to see, you know, eventually when, when time passes and he gets convicted That'll or not, do, convicted, yeah. was there evidence or was it, was it, well, you'd have to have evidence. You can't you can't uh, indict someone federally for those right. kinds of crimes unless you got hard shit, right? So, what did you say yeah, there was a, there was a hotline? Fire. Oh, for sure. There's well, a hotline. Well, yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, well there's I mean it's 1-800 call FBI is what yeah. the FBI uh, you know, says if if there's any people who have allegations or have experienced something in this case, call 1-800 FBI. But I did want to say one thing about what Darren was saying. So, we also know that through the class action there were two subpoenas um, grand jury subpoenas for documents, for, you know, emails, flight information, anything to do with travel and NIGARD and NIGARD companies, because the court documents allege that he used company employees and then also company resources in order to lure and recruit his alleged victims. And so the courts did ask for documents and I presume received some documments and have, I guess, enough yeah. to- Oh, you're indict. saying the Canadian courts, like when the FBI called Canada, Winnipeg RCMP and they said, grab this guy, please. And they said, oh yeah, show us your stuff. And they're like, here you go. And they're like, we're on our way. We'll go get him right now. And apparently they, they went to his house and I saw the place that he lives. First of all, million dollar home in Winnipeg. It's not bad. It's okay. But um, but the, but I I could not get over how, how they staked it out how they staked the whole thing out. Tell me about that process because right? it's the coolest. That was pretty interesting actually because all this time we thought he was in Falcon Lake, at his cottage in Falcon Lake, Manitoba. You know, yeah, right. And yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, about forty five minutes outside of Winnipeg, and so we thought he was in Falcon Lake. And then here we are, we get these court documents and we're reading and, and the RCMP is saying, well, you know, we got a call from the US authorities and they told us to, you know, this is where he's gonna be at this address. And so they went and sat outside the house, did surveillance for five days looking to see if they could spot him. And they brought in Winnipeg police as well. And so 
the Mounties and the Winnipeg police are doing surveillance on this million dollar home in a pretty upscale neighborhood in Winnipeg for five days looking for him. And then they say, you know, they spot him peering through some basement windows and yeah. they're seeing cars coming and going and they believe that it's him and he hadn't left. And so they decide that they're going to go, go in and arrest him. And then they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was wow. were um, was he any stories? Have you talked to the arresting officers at all about what it was like to arrest him? Like no, no, you can't no. allow. Police talk. don't typically talk to us. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought I thought it was like, uh, like, like hey, it was in the movies. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was no. in the movies where you're like, no. hey, hey, I'll I'll uh, I'll buy you a steak dinner if you give me a tip if you give me a hot tip here. It Definitely doesn't... not, and we no. would never actually do that. <laughs> I just I was just wondering. I just, I'll give you yeah. a Tim Hortons gift card if you tell yeah. me what's none uh, of the above. We don't we don't play like that no that's just the states then eh <laughs> i can't i can't tell it's only the states it's only the u.s where the corruption is eh do you wear yeah. a bowler hat with a little thing in there that says press what do you go running around no no i do no <laughs> same thing you should have one of those those are awesome <laughs> so what happens now like when 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 will he get extradited and and don't know and uh, we don't even know if he's going to fight the extradition. And so wow. we also don't know if Canada plans to press any charges and if Canada then decides, well, well we would like to. Uh, they'd have a look now, like when the FBI shows them some stuff, they'd be like, we should probably. And are is that that's because that's what stuff like this does. It spurs other investigations, does it not? Well, I mean, it was we were told that they were already investigating, that Winnipeg police were already investigating, although Winnipeg police won't say, they won't confirm or deny it for mm -hmm. privacy reasons, they say. I'd also heard that some of the uh, alleged victims had gone to the RCMP and reported alleged assaults at Nygaard's Falcon, um, Falcon Lake Cottage. But mm -hmm. again, RCMP aren't saying if they're investigating or not. And so Crazy. they're really tight-lipped. And so we really don't know where this ends up, but we do know he is going to apply for bail. Whether he gets it or not, I don't know. I hope he doesn't. Uh, You'd imagine he wouldn't get it, right? Yeah. I would imagine he would or wouldn't. Sorry, I didn't catch it. If, he, if people are saying that he's a potential flight risk and he's got assets around the world and can, can travel easily, then one would imagine a judge, federal judge would probably assume he, he might be a flight risk. Right, but he's never been convicted of a crime either. So is he broke? I is he broke? Like I, I don't know. I guess from what I'm understanding, court documents, and I was I was doing some light reading, some light Caroline Bargut reading uh, on the internet today. Is that there? There a lot of uh, a lot of sales of buildings of his that have either gone into receivership or deals, and he's using money to pay off old debts, so having to sell a bunch of his stuff. So that's why I asked. It was a very crude way. Like it's not a very showy way of saying. Tell me about his financial situation. That's why I'm like. Well, I don't personally know about his financial situation. <laughs> However. Yeah. In the documents that I've read, um, you know, the FBI says he's he has 40 companies around the world that he, you know, whether the company documents show that he is the owner or not, the FBI says he controls and owns all of them, mm -hmm. and that he has been liquidating assets uh, in the U.S. and in Canada. Nine of his companies are in receivership, and the receiver has sold two of four properties, yeah. um, but there's... The belief is he will be claiming bankruptcy or the companies will be claiming bankruptcy in January. Um, but we don't know. We don't actually know what his financial situation is like. I mean, mm -hmm. his son alleges that he has been, you know, moving money offshore. Yeah. But we don't know that. We. Yeah. We don't know what his financial situation is. No one does yet. Yeah, I guess you're gonna have to wait a lot to see. Of smoke here. The old oh, tons. But, but the court documents say that he has um, company employees who are helping to extract money. Uh, well, they're liquidating assets and and extracting money for him. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know what that looks like and how that plays out. But. You mentioned his son and, and Darren. I don't know if you read this part of Caroline's reporting. But the his relationship with his two sons was all kinds of creepy too. I mean, you know, and his sons, and it's got one son named Kai, uh, mm -hmm. that it, you know he he's was quoted. Out, yeah. He's speaking out against his dad, and he's coming out mm -hmm. and saying, "Yeah, I want this guy in jail. He is a perv. I want him out. I'm finished with him. I'm done. I hope these women get uh, get exactly the penance they all deserve." Like, like you know, we talk in terms of alleged, and you have to because it's your professional duty to do so. But also, when he hasn't been convicted of a crime, right? Like he is in right. Canada. You're innocent right. until you're proven guilty. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, you know, the the stories, if true, 
and mm-hmm. and to to because the story is about having procuring women for his kids. Um, tra- right. So his son's alleged. So his son's also filed a lawsuit in the U.S. I think it was in August or July or some sometime in the summer. His son's filed a lawsuit. Two of his sons, and they they're um, named John Doe. So they don't want to be identified, and they say that that their dad had hired a sex worker to have sex with them when they were teenagers and they that he hired the same sex worker for both of them so one of them when she was in her 20s and then when she was in her 40s i guess for the other kid Mm -hmm. that's what they're alleging in court documents and kai supports his brothers and he you know he's it's hard for him too though right because this is your dad this is your dad that people are making all of these allegations against and and kai was known as the number one son you know, he actually said in October that he changed his name to take on his mom's name. So now he is Kai Zen Bickle mm-hmm. instead of Kai Nygaard because mm. he didn't want he didn't want that association. Well, I, I hope, um, you know, whatever's alleged, if true, uh, you know, I, I hope that uh, every every positive course is taken on behalf of every victim in these circumstances. And thank you so much for, for, you know, spending some time talking to us about it, Caroline. Thanks I'm for having me. So sorry. You thought I was a dick for 20 years. <laughs> uh, if I did anything to upset you, I'm sorry. Yes. My Honestly, hair is our, that was blonde. so long ago. I do not remember. <laughs> okay. Yes. I know. The first thing I said to do is, is that, look at you, are you look blonde? At you or are you white? Are you look at you back. back no, you now, swore. Wow. Yeah. It's so long ago. I don't even oh, remember. You're the best. I love you, man. Happy, <laughs> happy Christmas, Dean. <laughs> Listen, yeah, yeah. Uh, great work. I, I read a lot Thank of the you. stuff you've done. I've been Thank following you. your career, not avidly and weirdly, but like when I would see you put stuff out, I would go, oh, fuck, good for Caroline. Um, you're a tremendous. She was so nice back then. Yeah. You know, but... you know what I thought of you back then? You want me to finish with that? Yeah, you probably didn't even know who I was. Thought you were emo. I thought you were this emo. this weird emo chick. Or emo before emo. I did. Like cuz you had cuz your hair is like you had bangs before bangs were cool. You had <laughs> really dark hair, you had bright lipstick, you had really cool glasses. Kind of like now? Yeah. You, you you don't and I'll tell you this is you I don't can, think I wore glasses back then. You may be mistaking me for someone else. Nope. I mean I wore contacts back then. Nope, you're wearing glasses. So I'm, I'm looking, I was, I was, uh, I was looking at you now. I'm looking at you now. Like I'm staring right at your face. Now you have not aged. You have in 20 years, you look. Except I have. You look exactly (laughs) the same. I won't say whether that's good or bad because I know (laughs) men are not allowed to comment on women's appearances, but I want to tell you, Caroline, you haven't changed the day. Uh, and you're a professional. You look terrific. Um, but you, you're, uh, I really appreciate you just uh, joining us today and spending some time with us and hanging out with thanks us. Thanks for and, having me, guys. Yeah, that was fun. You. Yeah, thanks. It was gory, appreciate but it, it was gory, but fun. Um, yeah, the parts, yeah, when we were yeah. just reminiscing, that part was fun. <laughs> Stay out of Steinbeck for the next few months. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. See you thanks. later. That's Caroline <laughs> Bargoot, uh, who's got to get on with the rest of her life. So uh, can you? Can you fuck it? First of all, first of all, this is the opinion portion of that whole segment. Is there, has there been this pentaveret of rich cocksuckers rolling around making money just so they can have harems of underage women to traffic to other creepy zoids? Have you I, know, is, I, I think it, there's, two, there's two schools here and I'll stick to my where there's smoke, there's fire. This guy's fucked. He's, he, he is, he is screwed beyond belief. I mean, because the FBI does not target you. The FBI does not call a foreign country, right. whether it's Canada or any foreign country and go, can you grab them for us? We'd appreciate that. Unless they have a mountain. First of all, the FBI doesn't look at you unless, unless you have significantly committed some significant crimes. Yeah. He's screwed beyond belief. And his son yeah, is they already, don't, um, Yeah, no, the, the kids are smoke, fucked. Yeah. The smoke was fire. Uh, but there seem to be two separate camps of rich cocksuckers, okay? You got your rich cocksuckers like the Nygaard and the uh, Epsteins mm-hmm. and the, the uh, Jeffrey, or the big producer guy, Hollywood producer. Um, the big big guy that got in trouble for Hollywood producer. Uh, Weinstein. Is, Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein. So you got these guys. That, that are fuck you rich and then they go into the creepy realm and do creepy shit and get caught and get busted and disgraced. Then you got the other group of rich cocksuckers that are like our philanthropists, like the girl who wrote all the Harry Potter books, Kate, Kate Downing, whatever her name is. And, JK, and, JK uh, Rowling. 
rolling her Downing. and uh, um, uh, the Microsoft guy, you know, Bill Gates and his wife have, have donated uh, outrageous sums of money to philanthropy causes. There's just two separate camps. Yeah. I just, I, I have a feeling like I look at this guy who, by the way, looks exactly like Siegfried. Put up a picture of him. He is oh, such yeah, he, a fucking is, freak. A, I couldn't a, say that. I couldn't say that with with Caroline on the phone because and and you know what she's probably watching a little bit right now going thank God I wasn't there for you calling him such a fucking freak but this guy's a fucking freak yeah like, look at him. look at him I mean this is this is the face of a guy by its cover but well kinda... listen this is a face of a guy who who has been charged by the FBI with mountains of fucking evidence who's still innocent of sexually assaulting. Hundreds of women, young, old, trafficking, passing them off, trading them. To got Prince Andrew was at his place in the Bahamas. Ooh, really, like you didn't know. Nice. So nice. that's why I was asking the question. There's got to be a quorum of of these guys that have been on the underground exchange, like the movie Taken. You ever see that Liam Hendrick, Liam uh, Neeson ass kicker? Yeah, Taken. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, like Taken, like that 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 was real. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. Is that this kind of shit has got to be real because oh, yeah. we're and now after 50 years seeing the terrifying. living proof of this kind of stuff. And it's because all these girls, all these young girls and these women that they have their they have lives and they have families and they have yeah. dreams. And and especially the young girls like their lives are completely destroyed with a capital d destroyed they're always going to have it hanging over their heads no matter how, what they go on and do in life it's they're going to have the, these these horrible nightmares and experiences to 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 relive from time to time and it sucks mm -hmm. and they should just if, if this guy is guilty again alleged never been charged hasn't been charged yet probably will probably will be found guilty. guilty again smoke there's fire uh they should just cut his dick off I mean, can we change the rules? Uh, uh, guys just... like Epstein, he, he he killed himself, right? Sure. But this guy, I mean, that should just be like, look, you're guilty of going to prison, but we got to cut your dick off. Yeah, I know. And they should make it like a pay-per-view and, and all the money goes to the victims. I, I don't see I don't see uh, how I this guy... I would to watch uh, that. I would too. I think a lot of people would. That's <laughs> Knowing that the money is going to the victims would be great. I often find that like crime should be uh, settled by the victims. I need to. I, I would love to move to into a society. Wouldn't it be great if we could move towards some kind of societal norm where the the crime or the crime that was committed and perpetrated on the victim, um, it's not a jail sentence per se. If it's real bad, you could let the victim or the families of the victim or loved ones of said victim exact the penance on the criminal. On the so person like who did the crime. Stoning. Everyone gets a couple stones. Yeah, yeah, stonings. Like you get five stones, <laughs> you get ten stones. Yeah, I want to move back to a stoning really society. Yeah. They're not like rock smooth stones you get in the creek. They're like, oh, like really shitty ones too. Like sharp yeah. edges. Yeah, yeah. Ones you that hurt, really hurt. Gloves, so you don't cut your hand. <laughs> you just, you just throw ten stones at the guy, and he's naked. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, he's. But apparently, the stoning isn't like that. You have to bury the person. That's a real stoning is uh, you bury the person up to the neck and then you just, you know, you sit there and wheel. It's like marbles with the guy's head. Oh, I thought they'd there. tie someone to a, like a tree and then just throw rocks at it. No, I, I know there's variations of stonings, but I wouldn't mind moving back to that societal norm of stonings for people, just for the victims and the victims' families in situations like well, this. You're stoning the head. You're basically just yeah. throwing rocks at the head. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not going to last long. He's I don't gonna think die. it is either. Yeah, I know. If you're throwing at the body, it's going to hit his... Yeah, but Arm, you record yes. it. You record it. It lives forever. Think of the clicks. Put it on pay per view and charge two fifty. <laughs> Think I'm of the clicks. Oh yeah, you could charge people per rock. You know, it, it, let's say the victims are like. Well, then it doesn't the, make it special. For no, the let's say. But hold it. Let's say the victims and the victims' families are lovers, not fighters, right? And they're like, we we've forgiven him, and then they're like, okay, listen, it's public stoning. A thousand bucks a pop. Do you know how many weirdos would come out of the woodwork to go? Yes. thousand yeah. dollars a stone. Yeah. Like I was watching this show called, uh, have you seen the boys? Have you been watching the boys? You haven't, you haven't seen this. The I Seth Rogen know, inspired you. Have, dude, you have to watch the boys. It's about a superhero uh, group called the seven that go around killing a whole bunch of people. They're all uh, like, like they're, they're fucking terrible. They're led by Homelander. Who's not a Patriot. He's a cocksucker. Um, but my point is this, is that the boys is, um, is a lot like what we're talking about. 
a lot like what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, lots of revenge. And by the way, you got to watch it. It's incredible. Yeah, I can't believe you haven't seen it. What network is it There's on? A, uh, it's on Prime. It's on Prime. Okay. Did, you see, did you see The Mandalorian's season finale no, last night? No, I don't want to hear anything about it. I'm getting texted <gasps> like crazy. I, I was up late. <gasps> I didn't have the energy to, to watch it. You got to watch yeah, it. You're a big Star Wars fan. Right? No, I'm not. That's the thing. I'm not. I'm like, oh, you got to watch it. You're freaking it. out like you are. Yeah, because I was freaking out doing? today. I got like the fucking Jimmy legs and everything watching it. And my feet got all clammy. My hands got clammy. You... I, I want to talk about the, the 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 Mandalorian season finale. It's called Chapter Sixteen. I got into the fucking Mandalorian this year, huge. Uh, thanks to my bud Fred Kennedy, and of course the kids on the escalator, which is one of our podcasts, Brent and Donnelly and Chris Machete. And I I I I don't know how to explain the season finale other than, and I'm I'm not one to overstate things, and I'm really not. But what I saw in the season finale, without spoiling it which i want to do so fucking bad if what i saw in the season finale was the greatest star wars episode better than the movies shocking confusing uh satisfying it just it, it, you I can't I can't give any more superlatives other than it was the best one hour and the best finale of any show I've ever seen on television in that capacity. You can't and and I'm fucking want to I want to tell you what happened. That's the thing. I'm I'm dying to say here. This is what happened. This morning I didn't. I should have watched it last night. I didn't. Uh, but it's nice to have. Can I tell you what happened? No, I, no you can't. Because I'm a big fan. I got Star Wars. Can I allude? Can I allude to some things? Can I make some allusions? Don't allude. Don't tease. Can I tell you? uh, You can't tell me shit. You tell me it's awesome. That's all you can tell me. You loved it. It was great. You had a good time. You got the Jimmy leg. You 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 went like this. Yeah, I I I, I couldn't under. I I was I was mesmerized by what happened in that episode. And 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 I I I got something to do this afternoon, dude. I texted. I texted Brent Donnelly, uh, who has a, a podcast on the network called Kids on the Escalator. It is about the Mandalorian. They're wrapping the season, I think, tonight, and the fucking guy hasn't watched it yet. I texted him because I had a question about it. And this is how weird the guy is. This is how weird you people are. I wanted. To, I would want to know what happened, and then I would go watch it. I would want some. I don't have a problem with people spoiling shit for me. I don't. I, Good. Tell me what happened. I'm good with it. Then I'm going to go enjoy the performance. But I sent this, and I won't read it to you because it's a spoiler. Like, even this text, me reading you this text is a spoiler. I'm shocked. Is this the blank or did blank blank from the blank? He's like, this is his tweet. I just deleted your fucking chat because I have not watched today's episode. Aggressive. It's it's a it's a Star Wars episode. It's not like it's not like I I told him it's it's not Star Wars, Dean, to to a lot of people like your friend and and me. It's it's uh it's It's like something about Mando. I deleted it. That's what he said. It's a call. I got tattoos. I got Star Wars tattoos. I got Star Wars stuff laying around. You know, this is really close by because I'd be like, Do you want me to tell you about last night's episode? I don't. You don't want me to tell you that there's an X Wing in it? No, I don't. You just did, though. Thanks. <laughs> dick. You are a dick. She's right. Caroline was right. You're a douche. <laughs> That's a douche move. I'm supposed to be your friend, Dean. Okay, okay. Do you want me to not tell you? I want I want Sean to mute his mic. Nothing. I won't say a word, then. I won't say. <laughs> Sean, you got controls, buddy. Come on, help me out. <laughs> Leave me high and dry over there. Okay, so here's the deal. Better, way better. I can I can deal with this. <laughs> did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it out, Dean? Did you yeah, get it all I out? I did. I had to do it. I don't know what it is. Most of me wants to destroy this for everyone. 
I, I don't know what it is. I was thinking about it. I was thinking of, I know I can't, but I was thinking about tweeting today. And, and because I have so much respect for what they did, I won't. And I'm not that big of an asshole. But this part of me still wants to. I don't know why. I want to tell everybody what I saw because it was just so incredible. And I want people to rush and watch it. It's like when you're watching a movie, right? You watch a movie and everybody's like, uh, oh, let's sit down and watch a movie. Great. Much. And you've seen it. I've seen the movie. And before the movie, I'm like, this is, you are going to love this. It's going to be, it's going to blow your mind. It's going to be the funniest movie you've ever seen. And it isn't. So I get that part of not spoiling it for people because usually things never live up to my expectations. But who the fuck, after hearing so much about it today, doesn't want me to tell everybody what happens? Well, that's what I'm doing after we get off the show. I'm going to go watch it because I don't want to. I don't want to get texts from. Can you do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? The last fifteen minutes. Can you please record your face? Just record your whole reaction. Can you take a reaction video from you watching Mando today? Record the whole thing. I, you don't need to act. You don't need to perform. All I want to do is see your reaction from watching the Mandalorian, the whole thing, but just, and it's not even, I'm, and I'm, I'm trying not to spoil you by saying the last 15 minutes. I'm trying not to spoil it. That's why I extended. Kind or of have. Now I know time. the last 15 minutes are exciting. No, the whole thing's incredible. But can you just record your reaction to what happens during this episode? That's all I'll say. All right, I'll set. Up, I got. I got a few iPhones that have room. I'll set. I'll set it up, record it, and I'll edit it. Please. So when the good thing, the good thing happens. Please, because I. I wish I had a video. Quite frankly, of me. to be honest with you, I'm a little embarrassed. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I'm a huge nerd. You not like be. friend. You should be. There's no way I should have beat you to that episode. It's bullshit. I, was, I, had, my, I had my face stuck in Final Cut Pro and Pro Tools last night for hours doing mixes. For the new uh, punk rock karaoke video that just came out. You doing the punk rock karaoke video? Just came out today. Yeah, Brad. One we do one every week. Play it right now. Let's see it. Have people go to the punk rock karaoke socials and, and check it. Okay, where do they do that? Punkrockkaraoke.com. At punk underscore rock underscore karaoke at Instagram at prk underscore la on Twitter. All right. Or I mean, if you don't know how to Google punk. Rock karaoke shit. If you don't know how to Google anything right now in, in 2021, you're you're an idiot. That's just a... Google punk rock karaoke on Google or or Netscape, whatever you're using these days, and uh, it comes on up. Okay, yeah. well, Netscape. Remember Netscape? That's you, you know what that was. That was you not knowing where to tell people to go to get it. I just did. I said the you Instagram just said Google Twitter. it. You said Google it, and then you insulted people, and which is a great cover. I do it all the time. If you don't know what it is and you're dumb, that's your fault. I'm like, I still don't really know what the web, web website is, so I'm just going to cover. That's what I just saw you do. It was awesome. I think most people, when they watch podcasts or shows or listen to radio and someone's promoting something, they just go to Google and type in that thing, and then, then the screen pops up with all the links. I do too, but I could have just... You know, no you one goes, a, oh, they didn't put a pin right Instagram in it. or the Twitter. Therefore, I have no idea what to do. I am clueless. <laughs> How do I find this? Yeah, punk see, rock you're doing karaoke? it again. You're putting it back on them instead of just giving them the link. It's an original punk rock karaoke dot com. That's what it is. We just yeah. looked it up. Okay. Original <laughs> punk rock karaoke. There. We haven't put the, I haven't put the video up yet on the on the uh, on the page, but it's on all of our socials. You see how Facebook. I I ferreted you out live right there. You didn't know. You didn't know. I don't care, dude. I don't care. Come at me, bro. <laughs> Darren, tell me the name of the website. Don't if you're you're dumb if you don't already know it. Just Google it. And I'm like, you don't even know it, do you? And you're like, not really. <laughs> I did. I said the Instagram. Sean, didn't I say the Instagram huh? and the Twitter? I did. I did. I love you, man. You're the at, best. At punk underscore rock right. underscore karaoke Instagram. Time to Face, announce on Twitter. All right. Punk, oh, sorry, PRK underscore LA. And of course, original punk rock karaoke on, on Just the website. It up. Or fucking Google punk rock karaoke, you fucking idiots! <laughs> <You're the best. laughs> what do I do? How do I find this thing that I'm really interested in? I don't know. Therefore, I'm just going to watch Mandalorian again. <laughs> All right. I won't waste it. T time to announce the winner of the uh, Show Us Your Pod contest brought to you by our friends at Blue Microphones. we got a bunch of guys standing by. We have a winner. Can you fucking Amazing. make that a little smaller, Sean? Like it's blocking out both of our faces. It's just yeah, that's better. Winner. You go. <laughs> Thanks. Right over my head. Um, 
Yeah, we've ran this contest for like a, a couple of months. We had 483 entries. Uh, we listened to, I'm not going to lie to you, all of them at some point. Some we listened to the whole thing. Some we didn't have to, if you know what I'm kidding. But we thankful that everybody sent in their podcasts nonetheless. So um, want to thank everybody for taking part. Want to thank our friends at Blue. But we're going to announce the winners of the Show Us Your Pod contest, which we've been running this entire last two months, I believe. DeanBlundell.com. How many did you get, Dean? 483. Jesus, Murphy. Yeah. I think there's a market for people who are really passionate about content, I think. Uh, coming in fifth, but uh, these are not, you know, ranked. It's just we're going to read four and then get to one, which would be the winner. So top five. Uh, the Gridiron Goons, good football podcast, really good football podcast. And stick around if we're mentioning your names, by the way, because we have news for you at the end of this. The Gridiron Goons, great football podcast. Um, the sports honchos, couple of dudes that are kind of my vintage that still have tons of hustle. Uh, and there's a guy named Paul that sings his dick off too. Anyway, congratulations to you guys. It's a great podcast as well. It's called the sport honchos, bad fodder figures. If you don't follow these guys, you should, uh, bad fodder figures at bad fodder figures, F O D D E R, uh, on Twitter, please do it because these guys are gamers. This is a great gaming podcast. Uh, if you love gamer content, if you love everybody freaking out about Cyberpunk 2077, watching these guys freak out about these things over the past few days has been an education. Fodder Figures podcast, uh, Bad Fodder Figures podcast is also there. Uh, the Raptors Reddit podcast, really good podcast. And, and I love me some basketball. Rumors of Kyle Lowry, depending on what happens this year. So the four of the five are sports. Can you relax? No one asked you. No one asked me. Sean asked me. (laughs) The Raptors. No, Bad Fodder Figures is not a sports podcast. It's a gamers podcast. I I literally just came off the back of that one. Uh, and the Raptors Reddit podcast is a Raptors podcast, and it's really, really good. They've got a great social following. They do an excellent job. They don't shit on players, which I liked about their podcast. You know, you listen to guys that just think it's cool to crap on players for the sake of crapping on players. I listened to those guys through the uh, uh, the playoffs, and they didn't shit on Pascal once, and I like that about them. And they're compelling, great content, and they understand and play the game, or where they play the game. They think the game really well, too. Uh, uh, but the winner of our... Show us your pod contest. That Toronto show. Ladies and gentlemen, that Toronto show. Congratulations. That Toronto show. These guys are weapons. They And, and it was tough because all of those podcasts were right there. But these guys, like, they've, they've been forking their own money into a studio in some guy's basement. They've remodeled a house, like a real house, to have an actual podcast studio. Uh, they're just really cool. They're, they're young. They talk about weird shit and I like weird shit. They've got a great conscience. They've got great representation around the board. And that was huge for me, to be honest with you. It was a really big deal when you can look at a, a, a show, a morning show, a Toronto show, a podcast, uh, and they've got people from every walk, every color, every race, every gender, every religion. Um, and, and they work, they work together and they've put their fucking money where their mouth is. And they're really, really, really good podcasts. So congratulations to that Toronto podcast. Big news though. Um, won, we're going to, they've won uh, a whole bunch of blue equipment. They've got ourselves a blue Yeti mic uh, right here, the Yeti X. We're going to make sure you get this. We're also going to give you these headphones, courtesy of our friends at Blue Microphone and a mic arm boom. We're also welcoming uh, that Toronto show to uh, the DeanBlundell.com network and a podcast as well. And we'll start them off with a sponsor and that's how it works. And then we're just going to grow that bitch until it's huge. We're going to grow that bitch until it's a son of a Till it's a real son of a gun. So it's your pod two and three and four, and you should it should be annual. Do you know how many podcasts I've listened to over the past two months? Four hundred and eighty three. Four hundred and eighty. Yeah, three. So no. <laughs> we won't we're not doing Lucky it. Guess. Well, if we do it, I won't be listening to all the podcasts again, but I had to. Um, and I'm thankful everybody sent their stuff in. So uh there you go. Before everybody goes though, we're gonna offer um the opportunity to be into in the deanblundell.com network to all four of our uh, runners up or honorable mention. And uh, we're going to see if they want to come in. And if they don't want to come in, they don't want to come in. Uh, but they'll get treated like everybody else does. We'll manage a bunch of stuff for them. We'll help them get on their feet. Uh, we'll start pushing their podcast out. We'll do our best. That's what we do. 
We're good like that, actually, Welcome sometimes. Family, yeah. So congrats to That Toronto Show and every single uh, person that sent in their podcast. We appreciate it. Um, and uh, hopefully by the end of this, we'll be adding Gridiron Goons, the Sports Honchos, Bad Fodder Figures, Raptors Reddit Podcast to the list of wonderful content providers that we truly do have here at DeanBlundell.com. So appreciate it. Thanks for doing this, Darren. Love it, buddy. Love you. And uh, Bills are playing the donkeys tomorrow. Tomorrow? Saturday? It is a Saturday a game. Oh, yeah. That's right. We're at that portion of the season. There's two games tomorrow. There's uh, the Bills and the Donkeys. Yep. Uh, and then you got the uh, Panthers and the Green Bay Packers. We haven't talked about Josh Allen since. Um, so we'll talk about Josh Allen Monday. I, depend, I, I don't even care how he does this weekend because I think he's the second best quarterback in the NFL. Well, I, really I do, do because if they win, they win the AFC East. So it's kind of a big deal. I know. It's huge. It's huge. But Josh Allen is like I, I'm. I'm really. I talked about this last week. I'm really fucking happy for you because Josh Allen's Thanks. an actual quarterback. I appreciate that. It's, it's about time. And you got Taylor Hall this year, so I'll fuck that up. Have a yeah. great day. Overrated. Talk to you soon. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> See you, pal. <laughs> All right, Darren Pfeiffer from the Rock and Roll Band Goldfinger and the Dangerous Dangerous Darren Podcast, which you can get on Adobe Radio. It's a cool platform. You can stream like really cool music. Thanks, guys. Mile High Champ, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, thanks to our friends at Owner's Box, Owner's Box Fantasy Sports. Listen to me. I want you to listen to me very, very, very carefully. They're doing two things right now for you because it's Christmas. Owner's Box, at Owner's Box on Twitter. Ownersbox.com. Sign up right now. Raptors Reddit Podcast host. What's up, dog? You guys are in, right? Tell me if you're in, at Mile High Champ. You're in. You're coming into the network. We need you. We love you. Um, but I want to thank our friends over at Owner's Box Fantasy Sports. Now, these are the two things they're doing for you for Christmas. They've got a $500 cash bonus. If you deposit $500 when you sign up, they'll give you $500. They'll match that. Every, every time you shove money into that thing, they'll match it if you sign up. You just got to sign up. That's the first thing you have to do. And when you sign up, the deposit match, it's uh, one of those things that you're you're going to regret if you don't do it now. I know I would. It's like not taking advantage of a deal. Oh, go, oh I should have signed. Now I'm signing up for free and I don't get anything. Uh, no, that's not how these guys work. Not only do you get a $500 deposit match if you deposit 500 bucks, up to 500 bucks, it's also free to sign up. Now, here's the kicker. They're not only giving you $500 to play fantasy football, basketball, it's on right now, hockey, it's coming up. They're also giving you a brand new PS5. That's right. Go to ownersbox.com right now, ownersbox.com. Sign up for a PS5. They're giving a bunch of them away. And the more people that you refer, the more times you get to enter. You increase the odds of winning yourself a Christmas PS5. Courtesy of our friends over at ownersbox.com the world's best weekly fantasy sports platform. They've reimagined the game so you don't have to. Ownersbox.com, fantasy sports. It's where we play. You should too. Thanks to our friends at Blue Microphones for everything. Uh, really appreciate you being part of that contest as well. It's obviously the microphone of DeanBlundell.com. Uh, and thanks to our friends over at uh, Gitch, Ed's Fine Imports. See these bad boys? I wear these. I wear them every day. Not this pair. Not this pair. Like, I wouldn't bring this pair in here and I wouldn't wear them every day. But this is what I wear every day. Let me tell you why. They got a pouch in the front for your nutsack. They're super breathable. They stretch. Because you got to move. And... See the separation you get from the inside of this thing? This is upside down, but you know what I'm saying. Hey, yeah, the guys go in there. Your guys go in there. Your legs are here. There's no contact. There's no contact with these. No contact. Get some Gitch. Go to Ed's Fine Imports. He's got a promo code. Use it. Gitch3. You order three pair. Pick your size. Pick your color. He'll send them to you. He'll rush it for Christmas. And if you use promo code GITS3, you get the fourth one for free. So four pairs for the price of three. That's fine imports. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching the podcast. And pretty sure I'm done. Are we finished, Sean? Are you done? Anything you want to add to the podcast? No? We nailed it today. Happy to go on a Friday, 4 o'clock. You want to get the fuck out of here? <laughs> uh, listen. 
and I mean this from the bottom of my heart after doing that podcast, some seriousness. Uh, if you know somebody uh, or suspect with good reason uh, that someone's being abused by anybody, sexually abused by anybody, after that Nygaard story, I think it's worth saying it's your job to speak up. Always is. Please do so. Thank you. Have a great day. We'll see you next week. Bye. Are you going to hit the music or what? No? Fuck, hit the music, dude. You got to hit the music. <laughs> <laughs>